Hello, everyone. We would like to welcome you to our fifth and final webinar in this series uh, between a collaboration between you, Welcome, and Spazio Italia and Kuwait. Um, we, today we have a very interesting uh, topic. Uh, I think uh, if you've been uh, to the other webinars, you would have, you will find out that this webinar encompasses all the other things we've talked about, like self-awareness and confidence, which are going to be very important when we discuss uh, decision making. So today with me from Italy. We have Chiara Monaci. Monaci. I'm sorry, I keep butchering the name. Perfect. Uh, Chiara is a life and business coach. Uh, she is she's a certified uh, executive coach, certified life coach, and a certified group and team coach. She is the founder of Chiara Monaci Coaching, and she helps women all over the world reinvent themselves by finding their purpose and following their passions. She's also she's a coach as well as a digital entrepreneur, spiritual speaker, and a wife, which I think is the most important one. So welcome on board, Chiara. Would you Thank please you. just tell us more about yourself? Thank you, Taiba. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me here tonight. Thank you, Mrs. Lucchetti Baldacci, for inviting me to take part in this project. I'm really excited to be here. Just like you said, I'm a life and business coach, Italian. I have my own coaching business. I work mainly with women, not just Italian women, women from all over the world, women of every age and background, and I help them mostly change their lives and reinvent themselves. Uh, finding their purpose and turning their passions and hobbies into a profession or a business. This is mainly the work I do. So this decision making is uh, definitely something I deal with on a daily basis because when you uh, want to change your life, you are going to have to make many decisions. And I know deciding isn't easy. I am aware of that. So I'm hoping that Tonight, I can share some insights. Hopefully, these insights can help everyone who's listening to make uh, the best decisions ever for themselves in their lives. I'm really excited to be here. And we're looking forward to hearing more. And from Kuwait, we have with us uh, Khuloud Al Harami. Khuloud is a neurolinguistic programming coach and practitioner. She is a timeline therapy practitioner. Uh, she has a weekly a uh, segment on Kuwait uh, na uh, local TV. Um, and she mostly discusses matters that concern mothers and balancing between their work and raising their kids. Um, Khulud is very passionate about her work. You can see it also on her social media. Khulud, welcome to this webinar today. Thank you so much, Leiba. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be part of this webinar, to be very honest. I think we have a bit of a connection issue with Khulud. Okay. Yeah. I will, uh, no problem, I'll take care of that with Khulud. So today we are discussing over decision-making. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. And so- Khulud, we yeah, lost you for a second there. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. So do you hear me now? Yes. yes now it's okay. okay. Okay, perfect. So like I was saying, all of us as children were conditioned to have certain beliefs, to have certain values that have been passed on to us by our parents and their parents. And that sometimes keeps us trapped and takes us away from our inner voice. And that affects our decision making a lot. And it also affects our well being. It affects the way we raise our children. And it's very, very freeing when you are able to reprogram these beliefs. Some of them are very limiting beliefs. So, reprogramming them through neural connections, repetition, language, and then you create a whole set of new beliefs and values for yourself and a whole different lifestyle. Excellent. Looking forward to hearing more about that. So starting off, um, Chiara, why, why is decision making important for us uh, in general and then specifically for women? 
No, decision making is important because life is about decisions. You cannot go through your life without making decisions. Every day, I think, each day, we, from the moment we get up till the moment we go to sleep, we are making decisions. Whether we are aware of it or not, we are making decisions from choosing what to eat to, to choosing where to go, what to do, what to say or not to say. So it's important to learn how to make decisions that will make us happy, that will make us feel fulfilled in our life. Decisions will determine our lifestyle. What we decide to do or not to do will determine a chain of events and it will determine our life. So it is important to cultivate uh, self-awareness or emotional intelligence since this is what we're talking about so that we can make the best decisions for ourselves. Because only when we are aware of ourselves, only when we truly know our values, we can make good decisions for ourselves. If we know what makes us happy, what we need to feel fulfilled, uh, what is important to us, then we can choose the right things that we want in our life. If we don't know what our values, what our core values are, we risk on making the wrong decisions for ourselves. And the core values are, are, are different for everyone, of course. But once you get to know yourself and you know what matters to you in life, what your core values are, you know what is right for you. You know when to say yes to something or no to something. Say your core value is freedom. You know when you are being proposed something, I don't know, a, a job, a promotion, a project, you know that if that affects your freedom, that is not the right call for you. Or if your value is family, spending time, having a chance to spend time with your family, taking care of your family, you know that whatever decision brings the lack of time that prevents you from being with your family, that is not the right decision for you. So it's, it's decision making is super important. We build our life decision after decision after decision. So it's so important to cultivate our self-awareness, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is, is at the base of a good decision, a decision that will keep us happy. If not forever, hopefully, well, if we are deciding who to marry, maybe we want this decision to be, you know, the right one forever. But in general, a decision that will keep us happy for a little bit so that we can enjoy our life. So it's super important. Yeah. Khulud, I want to um, focus on that uh, maybe more because here in, in the GCC, let's say culturally, um, as women, we are not given more, as much opportunities uh, to make our own decisions. Uh, even later on when we are adults, um, usually there's someone else making those decisions for us. So today, um, that obviously pro proposes a lot of problems, uh, conflict, inner conflict, because I am given, I am, someone make, is making that decision for me, but I wanna choose something else. Um, how is that more important here than ever? Thank you for that question. So having, having grown up in London and uh, raised in London and then moving back to Kuwait, I saw such a big difference between the well-being of a lot of the kids in London versus the kids in Kuwait. When I say kids, I don't mean kids. I mean teenagers, young adults. So just like I mentioned in every part of the world, you are born and there's already a lot of expectations attached to you. There are religious expectations, cultural expectations, family expectations. Like you mentioned, Leba, in the GCC, it's extended family expectations. It's even the tribal expectations. So there's a lot of expectations. So if this is the human, there is many layers on top of this human being. Whereas, and because in the GCC, we're such a small, tight-knit group of people. So a lot of us already know each other. We know each other's families. Um, you're very much scrutinized. And um, there's a lot of eyes looking at you. There's a lot of, um, I don't wanna say judgment, but there is a little bit of judgment as well. And it's as if because we're such a small society and we all know each other relatively speaking, um, it's as if, we were raised to not even be able to make a mistake. And being able to make mistakes is the basis of good decision-making. To be able to make good decisions, you need to be very comfortable in making mistakes so that you learn 
what works and what doesn't. And I very much saw the difference growing up in London, the children there and, and the young adults there, the teenagers there, there, it's okay to make a mistake. In fact, you're encouraged to make a mistake. And um, um, the idea of it's okay, um, let's learn for that mis from that mistake. We all make mistakes, it's all right. Well, how can we make it better? How can we help you? How can we support you? Whereas here in the GCC, you cannot afford to make a mistake because everybody's looking at you. And that one little mistake, all of a sudden, everybody knows about it. And so it really does, it really does. I mean, even me having to adapt to that was very, very difficult until I realized that I don't want to adapt to that. And instead, I'd like to very much be myself. And every single year, I try my best to keep deleting layer after layer. And I received a lot of pushback, but you have to do this in order to even be able as a mother to support my daughter for a better future for her. So I, I, I also tell her, make mistakes. So what if you make mistakes? So we, it's our duty to be, to be that change so that our children can also be confident enough to be that change for everybody else. Interesting, the comparison that you made. And that brings me to the question of, at what age are we supposed to make uh, those decisions or make decisions for ourselves? Um, when is too young? And um, if we are talking about trial and error in this scenario, um, is the focus supposed to be on smaller things when we are younger at uh, an age? Or are we supposed to make big decisions? Because think about it, in, in, in high school, you're supposed to make a decision about your career. What are you gonna study? Is that too soon for someone to make a decision? What do you think, Yara? I you're shaking it, your head. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I'm actually not in a way, I was not in a way to what Hulud was saying. I so, so agree with what she was saying. I feel it. I know, and she's absolutely right. I think um, there is a lot of pressure on all of us to make the right decisions. I think sometimes we are called to make important decisions when, when we are far too young to know what is right for us, to know what we want. I confess I'm a huge fan of changing your mind. <laughs> I am. I think we should uh, know and take into consideration the fact that it's impossible to make a decision that will keep us happy forever. I know that's maybe the, the aim for big things in life, but it's a lot of pressure on us. It's too much pressure to, to think, oh, I have to get this right. Everything, when I'm about 20 or 18, I have to decide everything, what I want to do with my future, what I want to spend my life with, do I want children or not, how many children, where do I want to live? You can't have all the answers when you're that young. And thinking that you have to make the right decisions in that moment and stick to those decisions for the rest of your life, life I think it's, it's just unattainable. It's impossible. I think we should um, kind of get used to the idea that some decisions will stay for, with us forever while others need to be revised. I am a fan of revising decisions. I think it's absolutely normal to uh, get into the habit of revising your decisions every so often, whether it's like every five years, every 10 years, there is no rule. Every so often we should look at our life and ask ourselves, am I happy about that? Do I still like the job that I chose? Maybe I don't. Maybe I liked it then. It doesn't mean that I made a mistake. Do I still love it? Do I still love the friends that I have? Do I still wanna live in the city? Do, do, do I still wanna, give my time to certain projects, it's okay to say, well, maybe not anymore. I've changed because we change, we evolve, and that's a good thing. We can't be the same person that we were when we were 20 or, or, or 25 or 30. I'm 47 years old, so I mean, and you keep on changing and changing. What's true for you when, you when you are at a certain point in your life may not be true to you anymore because our priorities change. Maybe you become a mother and you want different things once you have your children, or maybe not, and it doesn't matter, you want to pursue new, new, new projects, new avenues in your life. This I see it a lot with the people I work with. But Kira, when you're talking about something like career, 
yeah. um, you need to make a decision early on what you're going to be studying in yeah. order to um, have a career path, let's say. So that's a very big decision that in some cases you cannot revise later on. Yeah, I think uh, you're absolutely right. Some doors will close at some point, but not all of them. Things are changing, Taiba. I think that more and more is becoming common for people, at least I, I'm talking about Italy, but I would say all over Europe. Here in Italy, we're always a little bit late with trends. We're not so, so forward in the end. But I see that it's becoming increasingly common for people, especially women, to change career at, at one point, whether it's the late 30s, it's the 40s, it's the 50s, sometimes it doesn't matter. We all have our moment and it's becoming more accepted. Sometimes it happens exactly like after you have a family, sometimes it just, you just want to pursue new things. You, you discover you have passions you didn't have when you were younger or you did, but they didn't allow you to pursue them. Maybe they wanted you to do something else in your family. Or maybe you, nobody told you you have to do that, but you felt pressure anyway by society standards, by family standards, by peer pressure, or you just didn't know what you were doing and you chose something. But it's becoming more common to change career path. And I see this is exactly what I, what I do. And so many women are changing career path. And it's not, so, uh, it's not such a shame anymore. It doesn't mean that you are uh, changing your career path. It does not mean that you've made a mistake. You don't throw out whatever you've built for your career. Nothing ever gets lost. Whatever you achieve, whatever you learn, whatever you master will stay with you no matter what you do next. And it's, it doesn't mean you made a mistake. It doesn't mean I regret I did that. It may just mean I love that. I did it until I loved it. But now I want something different. Now I want something more. I want something new. So it, but yes, there's a lot of pressure. You're absolutely right to, to make the right decision, but it's so hard when you're that young. It's, it's really hard. You don't know yourself yet. You don't know. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, what are your thoughts, Hulud, on the idea that um, there is a gender difference when it comes to uh, making decisions where, for example, uh, women are averse to taking um, risks with decisions, uh, or women are more emotional when they take their decisions? That's a very deep question. So if you ask me, um, and through the line of my work and through having worked with uh, different genders, so males and females from different parts of the world, um, I don't see that gender, honestly, is what um, affects your ability to make decisions. But what I do see is um, the way you were raised and the values um, and beliefs that you were raised with. So for example, as a mother today of um, a 10 year old, since she was a little girl, I've always allowed her to make her own decisions, even when it comes to choosing what she's going to wear. So I would put um, a few different outfits and I say, Jude, what would you like to wear? which outfit would you like to choose? So I started very young with her because I didn't have that. I growing up having an older sister who was a, a very strong character um, and uh, being one of the younger siblings, um, I, had, I, I made no decisions for myself, literally none. I was just someone who was there, but not alive. And like Kiara said, not aware and not conscious. So when I became a mother, everything that I had experienced, I wanted to make sure it was completely out. And I introduced something new for my daughter. So even when it comes to what sport do you want to play? I introduced her to tennis, then to swimming, then to horse riding, then to ballet. And then I said, which one do you feel? So not even make a decision, but what do you feel? What feels right with you? Where do you feel you're flying? In which sports? And she chose ballet and dance. So I started with her very young. So I don't believe it is a gender. The gender is what affects your ability to make decisions as much as it is how you were raised. And also with what Kiara said, which I fully support, 
is that nothing in this world is stagnant. Everything is always moving. The earth is moving, the sun is moving, the moon is moving, the flowers are blossoming. We are all constantly changing. And if you haven't changed in a year or, or since maybe uh, a year and a half ago since Corona, if there has been no changes, then that's not good news. I mean, in the hospital and the machine, a, a straight line is a sign of death. So you need to constantly be changing, changing yourself, reviewing yourself, reevaluating yourself. But also, yes, Leiba, in this part of, the, in, in the GCC, as much as the women, mashallah, in Kuwait, in the GCC, are really trying their best to push. They're really pushing and they're really reaching some wonderful positions. And a lot of them, they're not waiting for, for someone to support them. They're entrepreneurs. They are trying their best. You're absolutely right. However, it's again, those expectations. It's those, if she does become an entrepreneur, if she does push those barriers, society still looks at her as, oh, she's intimidating because we're always expected to be the quiet, submissive, obedient, not causing any problems, not saying something different, because anything different and anything new is always scary. And this time coming from a woman, this is, so you have to really have a lot of thick skin, a lot of thick skin, and you have to have family members that support you. You have to have a support system. So even if it's not, let's say family, you have to have a good, strong group of friends that will keep you upright when everybody is, is, is pushing, pushing, pushing you back to what they're used to. Yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts about that. I, I couldn't agree more with what Ruth is saying. I'm nodding away <laughs> again, yes. And I, I love the fact that she said that it's the upbringing that makes um, a greater impact rather than the gender. I agree with her. Our upbringing is, is, is really important in how we see ourselves and how we, we, we think we are allowed to make certain decisions, take certain steps. And I can absolutely relate to her, to her experience. I too have, I am the third child. I'm the, the youngest of three. And I know that, yeah, I remember not actually being um, given the chance to make decisions. I, I was born in the seventies, grew up in the early eighties. So in Italy, well, it's, it's not like little girls were given so many opportunities. You were told, well, you're gonna, even like sports, yes, you're gonna go to the swimming pool. You go, I, I did ballet, I hated ballet. I was told, I, you know, that's what you're gonna do. Today, you're going to take a ballet class, okay? I just went, I just did things because, you know, this is what it, it just was like that. It's, I'm not criticizing the way of life, but it simply was that way. We weren't asked for our opinion. We weren't told, do you like this? What do you want for, for yourself? What do you want to do? You weren't asked that. So when you grow up, you may not even be used to the, the fact that actually you can make your own decisions and you shouldn't be afraid of it. I am a decisive person in, in, by nature. I know I am. I, I'm not afraid to, to make my bold decisions, but I know uh, that I had to sometimes struggle to say, no, I want this. I'm going to do it anyway even if nobody supports me. And I, am, I understand what Hulu said, you, you gotta have thick skin. Because sometimes nobody supports you and you may be unpopular when, when you make a decision. Coming from a woman, if you uh, put your foot down and you say, no, actually, I don't agree with this. I totally relate. Even in Italy, women are often um, required to be kinder than men, more accommodating, you know, more agreeable. Uh, if you are not, uh, if you are a decisive person, if you're assertive, well, that's, well, maybe you're not nice, you're, you're difficult to deal with. You know? An assertive yes. woman is still seen as difficult to deal with, mm -hmm. to keep it, you know, simple. Sometimes it's, sometimes even women don't, don't like assertiveness in other women because they themselves weren't allowed to express that that side of themselves so they resent it when they see it in other women but we need to cultivate our our freedom to decide we need to have the courage to make the choices that we want for ourselves and for those behind us absolutely because we have this life 
and the decision we are making are ours to make. At the end of our life, we want to look back and say, you know, it was a good life. I did what I wanted. I tried. It doesn't matter whether we fail or succeed. It doesn't matter. I tried. I wanted to start a business. I did it. I wanted to, I don't know, move to a different country. I did it. Mm -hmm. It is important to cultivate courage. Um, you mentioned, Kira, in the beginning about the emotional intelligence and the different skills. And you both talk about um, cultivating um, decision making from early on. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, having self-awareness uh, in the beginning is great to know exactly what you are going to set goals for. And based on that, you make your decisions. But uh, while you guys were talking, I was wondering what comes first, because both with decision making and confidence, there's there's the trial and error. And does this does confidence um, come in after you've built the decision making skill or do you need the confidence first, then you can start making better decisions? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? This is a great question. I don't know what comes first. I would say that you get more confident the more you make decisions, the more you make mistakes. Because when you are afraid to make, uh, to make a step, to take a step in a new direction, to make a decision, you're not going to experience life. You're gonna sit on a bench and watch the world going by, but you, 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 you don't play for fear of losing, as they say, right? For fear of losing, I'm not even gonna play. I'm not gonna make a decision, I'm gonna dare. And then I don't build my confidence. When I make a decision and I say, you know, I'm going to apply for that job. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go live in a different country. You nurture your confidence. You train it like a muscle because this decision is going to bring you experiences. You are bound to make mistakes and you are going to train your, your confidence muscle. Then you become, the more you dare living, the more you dare deciding and doing things and trying without fear of being judged, the more confident you become. The more you show up in life and say, you know, this is me, I'm trying, I'm not perfect. I will make a ton of mistakes, but that's when you, when you grow confidence. If you are afraid of making mistakes, if you're a perfectionist and you don't wanna try for fear of making a mistake, you will never know how strong you are because you're never testing yourself. So you never build that confidence that you need. So I would say the confidence will come to you the more you leave, the more you dare, the more you decide. I'd love to hear what Okulut thinks about it. Oh, a hundred percent. So when I have clients who are afraid to make, a to, to, to make that decision because they don't feel that they're confident enough to stand by and behind that decision that they may regret one day, I always tell them, fake it till you make it. Pretend that you're confident. Pretend that it's all going to be okay and just push yourself out there. Rehearse it. And I always start from the end. So I always ask them, what's the worst that's going to happen? You made this mistake. What's the worst case scenario? And it always, it always, they always realize that the thoughts the thoughts are way made up a whole story that doesn't even exist. And so for the longest time, there is no reality behind those thoughts. It's just thoughts that they've been used to hearing and, and having since childhood. So for example, um, um, you've always been a failure. So since, since they're children, if they hear sentences like that at home. So maybe from their siblings, maybe from their parents. Oh, you, you've always been the lazy one. Oh, you're never, uh, you're not the smart one in the family. Oh, you're never gonna be good enough. Oh, don't look at those rich people. They're different than us. So these are just sentences, but those sentences repeated, repeated, repeated every single day for a lifetime becomes a belief in that person's head and they might not even be aware of it, but it's that that is stopping this person from making that decision. So when we go to those thoughts and we break them down and we say, okay, so what's the worst that's gonna happen? There is no worse. There is no worse. What is the worst that's gonna happen? There is no worst case scenario, but you don't wanna be 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 and look back at being a teenager or look back at your life and say, oh my goodness, I gave my whole life away to my 
to to people just for example in the gcc to a society most of them i don't even they don't even care about me i gave my society my whole life that's the saddest thing i think anyone can experience so if you're going to compare and this is what i say to my clients if you're going to compare <laughs> do you want to live for you or do you want to keep giving your power your life your entire life to people that don't even care about you. Let's face it. But Khulud, it, it's, it's, let's say, easier said than done. So mm. if I am taking risks and, and trying to build that confidence, there's mm-hmm. always those situations that go wrong. And yes, it's, it's a failure. Um, usually those uh, negative thoughts start to pop up. And how can I avoid it from taking me two steps back after I've built some of that confidence by taking more risks? Excellent question. So to me, there is no such thing as failure. There is, what it really is, is just a learning. It's a learning. It's a learning experience. There is no such thing as failure. What is failure? You pick yourself up, look at the biggest entrepreneurs in the world. They've experienced bankruptcy, they've experienced homelessness, they've been kicked out of their own companies, but they pick their resilience. So they don't see it as, oh, I failed, so I have to stop. They see it, they get their books out and they say, what will I never do again? Then they say, what could I have changed? Then they say, what could I have done better? So the more mistakes or the more obstacles you face, It's the clearer the path. That's what I believe. The clearer the path, the more you are um, preparing for it, the more you have a a bag full of skill sets. So, and it's the same for everything in life. Uh, When you first, when I first started playing tennis, I was a complete disaster, but I wouldn't say I was a failure, but I was a disaster. And then with time, with learning new techniques, with seeing what works, I became much better. So there, in, in my books, there is no failure. Interesting. So how do I know, uh, Kiara, if I'm a person who is averse to decision-making? I could be a person who, you know what, I know what I'm gonna eat, I can pick my clothes, I pick the job, I'm comfortable. How do I recognize that I'm a person who is not taking risks and making my own decisions? Well, if you are living a life that uh, makes you happy, you have made the right decisions. But at one point, uh, maybe uh, some kind of um, unhappiness or restlessness may arise in you. And then you know that maybe you haven't been making decisions for quite some time. I know we're all different. Uh, Some of us uh, are quick at making decisions, others are a bit more overthinkers. And the overthinkers sometimes think, you know, I don't want to take a risk, so I'm not going to decide anything big. You know, I'm just going to live my life and, you know, like you said, choose what I eat, pick my clothes, that's my job, but, you know, um, stay safe, never there. And overthinking and not making a decision in the end is making a decision in my opinion, because when you don't make a decision, you are decided anyway. If I don't um, make an offer for the apartment that I love to buy, I'm never going to get the apartment. Somebody else will. If I don't, uh, you know, candidate myself for for a position, for a role that I want, I'm not going to get it. Somebody else will. So the idea of like, you know, living my life and I guess my day-to-day decisions, but you know, I don't, I don't do much. My life is okay like this. It, it's, it's just an illusion of, of safety or, happen, or happiness. I, I know we, we crave safety. I know we want to feel safe. But that safety is an illusion because every decision you don't make, you are making anyway. I don't decide to move. I'm deciding to stay here. If you're okay with it, that's okay. But the not deciding is a decision anyway. So we need to... To, to every so often look at our lives. Am I really happy? Ask yourself the question, but you know deep inside. I think we know deep inside if what we built is good for us. 
And I know it's not easy to make decisions, especially the most daring ones, like the ones that require us to change. I know it's not easy. In fact, it's hard to do it on your own. But I, I think it's worth trying. And decisions can always, like I said, be, be reviewed. We don't have to put so much pressure on us on, on uh, wanting to be perfect. And I'm going to say it's red and it's going to have to be red for the rest of my life. Why? Why not? We, we, can, we can continue to make decision after decision after decision to correct the course. If we realize at one point we're heading in a direction that we are not so sure we, we want to go. Sometimes we live on autopilot. We don't know what we're doing and we wake up one, one day and like, oh, I'm 40 and is this my life? Mm -hmm. When did I decide that? Or who decided that? Me, I did that? Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention. I just, you know, uh, reached one milestone after the other because that's that's how we, we leave. We, we sometimes we're even too busy to stop and say, what am I doing? What am I building? Because we're busy. We're busy working, we're busy with family, mm -hmm. we've so many commitments and distractions, outside distractions that take us away from, from looking inside and say, well, okay, what am I doing with myself? What am I doing with my life? It, it's it's hard to make decisions, but but we can learn. We can learn. Some people actually decide too quickly. Um, others take longer time. We're all different. Uh, I'm a person who just discovered that I was uh, living in my comfort zone because I was afraid of the consequences of making big decisions in my life. And now if I decided that I want to become a person who tries more things, where do I start? How do I um, think about those, those important uh, decisions that I have to make? Me? Either one, both of you actually. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. So a good, a good place to start is getting to know yourself. So everything starts with you. And I believe just as Kiara said, how do I know I've made the right decision? It's how you feel. Always how you feel. Do I feel good? Do I wake up with a smile on my face? Do I wake up excited for the day? Or am I waking up think, barely picking myself up? You know what I mean? Um, another good way to start is to visualize or maybe, uh, yeah, visualize what do I want to look like? What do I want my life to look like? Um, another way is write down some role models that you have. Who are your role models? And then write down what their values and what their lifestyle is like. And that will help you come to um, a better, uh, so it will help you come up with what your own values are. So for example, um, let's say my values include exercise, my values include me time, my values include time with my family, uh, work, friends. So once you have your values, and these are values, so they're set in stone, these are my priorities, they are set in stone. Then once you've done that, now you have to get into action. So if health is part of my priorities, then I've got to include this as part of my daily schedule. I have to make time for good eating habits and exercise. If family is one of my priorities, then that has to be included in my schedule. So you have to look at, you have to vision your, envision yourself. Do I want to be a person who every single day is just slouching, uh, low energy, not excited about life? Or do I want to be excited, challenged, adventurous, friends? And then who are my role models? What are their values? What do their lifestyle looks like? Then from them, I can put my own set of values, my own priorities, put that in a schedule and every single day, put it into action. And at the beginning, just like everybody else, when they first, let's for example, say when they first start going to the gym, you're dragging yourself to the gym. And like, oh, 
I have to go to the gym. But once you get into the habit of it, so once you continue and you are committed and, and, and what brings commitment, because a lot of people, they enroll in a gym and then they never show up. So what's the difference between a person who is committed and disciplined and another person who's not committed is self-worth. So he who, despite being tired, drags themselves to the gym and is committed and disciplined to that value that they hold and, and to that vision. When I grow up, I want to be healthy. I want to run around with my children. I want to run with my grandchildren. I don't want to have bad knees. So that's the vision for the future. So when you have high self-worth and high self-esteem, you will be committed because you're doing this for yourself, not everybody else. But when you have low self-esteem, low self-awareness, low self-worth, and you're used to pleasing everybody else and not yourself, you will not be going to that gym. You will enroll and never show up. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's self-awareness. Do I love myself enough to eat brown rice? <laughs> Do I love myself enough to go and lift those weights? You have to ask you, and, and that's what uh, being, um, that's what being, uh, sorry, I've been cut off, sorry. So that's what self-awareness and being conscious as much as you can throughout the day. So always talk to yourself. If I love myself, would I eat pizza every day? We'd love to, right? I'd love to. But, I, but because I love myself and I value health, I will not. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> that was, but I don't think that was a good answer for so many Italians here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love pizza. <laughs> we do love pizza. Who doesn't? <laughs> Kara, what are your tips? Well, I think um, one of the best ways to, to, to make decisions is to try and uh, also use your intuition. Um, I think it, we are, as women, we are highly intuitive beings. And our intuition is, is, is a superpower. And we should learn how to use it to make good decisions for ourselves. We shouldn't be afraid to use our intuition. We shouldn't be afraid to look irrational because we use our intuition. I think intuition is, is important when we need to decide what's best for us, what's going to make me happy. Should I take that job or not? Should I go to the party with that person? Should I hire that person? We should learn how to harness our intuition to make good decisions for ourselves and for our life. Because deep inside, we know what we want. It's just that sometimes we don't want to look irrational, so we dismiss our gut feeling. You know they, how they say we have three brains, our actual brain, our heart, and our guts. You know, in English, you say you listen to that gut feeling. I have a gut feeling about this. But we should learn to harness intuition. It's like seeing in a room without having to open the doors, like knowing things without having the information. We know in, deep inside what's the right, right way to go. If a decision is right for us, should I go into that direction? And we should definitely listen to our intuition when we make a decision using all three brains that helps making a good decision. And, and knowing, always remember to be forgiving with ourselves. There is no such thing as the perfect decision for life and like I said be aware that you can change your mind and uh, yes uh, cultivate your self-awareness get into the habit of quieting your mind when you have to make a decision never make a decision when you are in a um, in a negative state when you are overpowered by your emotions um, emotional intelligence is our ability to, to recognize our emotions, to, 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 to accept them, but also to manage them so that they don't overpower us. And especially when we're about to make a decision, it's important to say, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take my time and calm down and make a decision from a calm, uh, empowered place rather than a, um, angry or over emotional or sad or frustrated place. And that's when you make bad decisions when your emotions are all over the place. So we should cultivate our emotional intelligence and learn how to 
manage our emotions so we can make good decisions, not decisions that are like, I'm just going to do this out of revenge. I will spite for someone or because I'm just afraid now. So I'm deciding to do this because I'm, I'm scared, I'm nervous. And, and so I have to do something. That's not a good way to go about decisions. We should learn how to calm ourselves down. And sometimes I would say just ask for some time, buy yourself some time to make an important decision uh, when you are asked, do you, do, can you do this thing? Can you do this project? Can you, uh, do, do you want to do this thing? Get in the habit of asking, can I get back to you by the end of the day? Can I get back to you by the end of the week and negotiate a, a deadline? People want us to decide quickly sometimes and we don't have time to, 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 to maybe to think about it and to, to, to look at all the, the, the aspects of the decision. Well, we need to be able to visualize the outcome of the decision, know what this decision is going to bring in our life to make sure that it's the right decision for us. So if I take this job, what will this bring into my life? Will this bring more uh, time at work, working late or traveling? Am I okay with that? If I say yes to this person to help them with this project, do I have the time? Who will I have to collaborate with? Am I interested in that? Do I have the energy? Let's get into the habit of imagining what the decision will bring, the effects of our decision. Do I like what this will bring into my life? If I move to this city, what will my lifestyle be? Do I like that? That is. These are some questions we can ask ourselves when we're trying to make a decision and take our time. We have the right to, to take some time to decide. I know people want us to decide quickly, to say yes quickly, but sometimes as women, we tend to be, like Hulu said before, we like to people please. We tend to want to accommodate everyone and, and what are our needs? So we need to learn also to set some boundaries and, and I'm gonna think about it. If I have the time, I'll do it. If I have the energy, I'll do it. If I have the means to do this, I'll do it. We can't immediately say yes, so everyone will be happy. We, we need to, to learn to, to, to take some time to reflect on, on, on what we want and do we have the time and space and energy to to say yes. Yes, yes Yara, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, you know, very, very, very interesting. I am taking a few notes. And um, especially, I, I, I really fully agree. And when you, Chiara, say that a no decision is a decision, is a decision itself. And that this has to be clear that when I'm not deciding, I'm actually deciding. Even worse, because maybe sometimes I'm not deciding, but somebody else is deciding for me. And this means that maybe I'm comfortable with it. Maybe I'm happy. Maybe I want that someone else is, decided for me, is deciding for me. So I guess it, it really goes with responsibility. And first of all, to, to really understand who you are. And again, a self-awareness and, uh, yeah, and understand who you are and what you want. Now, I'd like to know, um, just my question, but just in my mind, if there is any, because, you know, decision is not yes or no. Decision, as you were saying, is, all, is also including effects. Effects sometimes not only on me, but on the others, on my family, on my children, on my husband, or society in general. And if there is any, any model related to decision, decision is not, I guess, it's not only one decision. Maybe there are related decisions that they will have to be taken into consideration in relation to the decision that, that I'm taking. This is my point and I would like to, to, to know your opinion about. And then I see that there is a, a, a question that I was also wondering myself by, by an Italian ladies, by the way, if there are different kinds of decision-making. So decision-making related, I don't know, she said, she's mentioning, I'm just trying to, to, to read it. She's talking about, for example, between personal or professional decision-making. If it's the same, uh, she wants to know if the process of making decision is the same. And then I, I don't know, I would like to know your opinion what about because maybe I, I'm thinking that all of them, personal and professional, especially when we are talking about the leadership position, it really affects others. So I would like you to, to know your opinion, what you think about it. No, oh, this is interesting. I, I, I think that um, the decision-making process is always related to whoever is in that process. So if I'm the one making the decision, I'm the one doing the process. So whether it's a personal decision or professional de decision, it's always me. So a person never changes. That's this, this mind, is this person, is this story, is this, it's me taking the same decision. So it's, 
I'm realistic to think that since this is a professional decision, I will be able to shut myself down completely. We are not just, you know, I am uh, only wife now, only mother now, only professional now. We take our, we're wholesome beings. So when I, when you're at work, you still are a, a mother, a daughter, a, a sister, a, a wife, a friend. Clearly, if you're a professional, when you're making decisions that will impact others, like I said before, you need to be able to manage your emotions. Leadership requires emotional intelligence. A good leader is capable of saying, this is how I feel, but this will not interfere in my decision making. I'm not going to hire somebody because it's nice or don't hire them because I don't like their zodiac sign. You know, I'm not going to get my, my emotions get the best of me. I'm, I will be able to be objective, but it's always me. So we always bring ourselves to work no matter what, but it is important to learn how to manage our emotions and not let them get in the way. Sometimes we're not aware of doing that and we still um, take them with us. I think the decision-making process is the same. Uh, it doesn't change because you are the same person. I think this is my take on it. Paulud, what do you think? Um, you said something very important, which is every decision you make has an effect, has another effect, it has a consequence. So for example, and we always, uh, the most repeated theme is work-life balance. And um, so uh -huh. this is where the professional decisions are very much intertwined with your personal decisions. So for example, like I mentioned, if one of my priorities, one of my main priorities is being a mother who is there raising my child, being part of my child's life, maybe the job that I'm holding today is not going to allow me enough time to be there for my child. So here, this is the decision that I will have to take I bring it up to the company. If they don't have policies where there are flexible working hours or where a woman can work from home, then it's more than likely I will have to, since raising my child is my first priority, then easy, this is an easy decision. And yes, you're gonna tell me, but what about the salary? What about the income? What about all of this? And, and this is absolutely true. So. Um, one should never leave a job if they don't have a savings of at least four months basic salary. So you give yourself, you, you have to evaluate um, how much leeway do you have? How much time can you have? Um, um, you don't just leave a job and you have so many bills and responsibility that, responsibilities that you, that you have to take care of. So you have to always try your best to never, of course, um, um, just live life impulsively, you always have to have. So if I have, for example, four months, five months saved basic salaries, then I have some leeway that I can then leave this job, maybe apply for other jobs. In the meantime, I am with my child. So it all depends on your priorities. What are your priorities? Again, uh, let's say, um, you're about to get this managerial position. Can I handle a managerial position when my priority is raising a family? Can I handle that? Sometimes you have to be brutally honest with yourself. And although it's extremely attractive, maybe this is not the time. Maybe when my child um, is old enough to go to nursery or kindergarten, that's when I am ready to take that managerial position. So many, many different layers here. One is being kind to yourself. Two is giving yourself time. So you don't have to achieve everything today. You, you can postpone certain things based on your priorities. So you have to know what your priorities are. And your priorities are also your red lines. They are your, that's it, this is my path. So it makes life so much easier when you know what your priorities are. Very yes. interesting. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, very, very I think interesting. I just want to put one more thing in there, which I found very uh, helpful for me is when I have a very important decision to make. Um, I would say make sure you're well well rested before making that decision because sometimes when you're tired and you're cranky you're gonna probably say no to something that's really good just because of your current situation and it's better off to take some time for yourself and then regroup before you actually make that decision uh, don't make any decisions based on your mood right now uh, mm -hmm. because that's I have figured out it was a wrong thing <laughs> many times so this is this has been an amazing discussion. Um, thank you much, uh, Kiara and Khulud, for both joining us. For those uh, listening, if you would like to follow both ladies for more, they're both tagged on our social media. You can follow them. And um, we also have the other uh, webinars in, within this emotional intelligence on YouTube if you want to go back and see them because with decision making honestly all the other skills that we've discussed tie into um, decision making so thank you so much ladies for being here uh, we've learned a lot and thank you everyone for joining us and I wish you a very pleasant evening thank you thank so you. much it's been a thank pleasure thank you very much thank you thank you so much thank you Bye. Good night. Take care.